Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing well and in this episode we are going to finish configuring our logout system and as well as we want to add some more styling to different areas of our website like some more additions to our navigation bar or making a nicer homepage rather than what we have now so it is going to be a lot of fun doing this so let's get started Okay, so till that point, we were able to customize our login system successfully, but currently if we press on that logout, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and start configuring this. So the way that we are going to do this is by adding an additional route to our application, and then this route will know to log out the logged in user, and then we will finish it with redirecting our users back to homepage. So we will open our PyCharm here. And actually, I see that I'm inside my base.html and it might be a great idea to show you what I'm going to configure in the future. So if you remember, then we have this logout anchor tag and then inside here we are going to send our users to that URL underscore for. So actually, if I'm on the base.html, then I'm going to do that. So I will zoom in and I will basically copy this from here and paste this in to here and I will change this to log out. Now you are probably asking yourself why you are using this URL for log out page although you didn't create the route because now I'm going to create this route. Okay, so we will go to our routes.py and we will go down here. Don't be, don't get too much worried about that. We said that this might occur because we inherited from some another class and that is fine. So we will go down here and we will say at app.route and actually let's zoom in a little bit and we will send our users to slash logout like that and then we will say def logout underscore page and then inside of it we have to use a built-in function that is already inside the Flask framework that will allow us to log out the current existing users. So in order to do that, I will scroll up here. I will import the logout underscore user built-in function from here. And actually, once we import this, then we can scroll down and use the function like logout underscore user and that is actually it okay so this will be enough to grab the current logged in user and log it out okay so this should be enough and the next step is probably the flash message that we want to raise here because once we log out our users it totally makes sense to display a nice alert to our users so the user could be basically aware that he's logged out so we could say flash and then we could say you have been logged out like that and actually it is a better idea to send its category as info because it just looks nicer in blue when we log out users rather than just green color okay so this is actually an informative message that we want to display and it totally makes sense to redirect our users back to home page once the user is logged out. Okay, so we will say return redirect and we will use the URL for and we will say home underscore page. Now again, the home underscore page comes from here. Okay, so our users will come to here once they are logged out. Now, we can actually save this out and already test this because if you remember, we configured as well as the button of logout on our navigation bar. So I will go to our website and I will refresh our website and it totally makes sense to check if it is up and running. So we will do that. So once our website is up and running and then you can see that our user is currently logged in and you can see it from this message. Now, if I click on log out, then you can see that we are back on our homepage and then there is an informative message that says us you have been logged out. So everything works perfect. Okay, so I think that our customization about the market page 
is pretty much finished because now we have all our navigation elements functioning correctly but currently i'm not quite satisfied with how our homepage looks like so it could have been a lot nicer if we had our logo on that homepage and as well as a button that says get started or something like that now i already have an html code that is ready to display such a homepage so let's go ahead and paste this in in our home.html and as usual you can grab this home snippet from our website only thing you will have to do is going to part 13 of my flask course from my website so let's go back to our pycharm and find the home.html template and actually i'm going to delete everything from here and i'm going to paste this in now let's have a quick look what is going on here now here we extend the base.html we already know how to do that and we also have the welcome to Gymshape Coding Market message wrapped around the blog title because we want to customize our tab name. And in the blog content, we have some elements that customizing the image that we want to display. If you remember, this is our logo of our website. And this is arriving from this big div tag. Now in here, we also display some nice H1 text. And inside here, we have a paragraph that says start purchasing products by clicking the link below. Now, the link below is this line. So this line is an anchor tag with a button of class button dash primary. You already know that from our previous episodes as we created this kind of button when we register or log in our users. And you can see that it takes our users to the market page if they click on get started. So this is actually something that should be pretty enough for the, for the most basic home page for any website. So if I save this and go back to our home.html and refresh that out, then you can see that we have a nice home, kind of a banner that really shows that this is our home page. Now, if I click on get started, you can already see that it leads us to the market page thanks to that URL for market page that is inside that anchor tag. Now here, we actually have some problem that you already maybe paid attention or not. Now you can see how currently the user that is using this website is not logged in. So we probably ask ourselves if we want to take our users to the market page if the user is not logged in. Well, I think that this is something that we can customize. So we probably want to avoid from our users to see that page if they are not logged in. So it totally makes sense if they are trying to click on get started and then it will lead them to the login page first. And then if the login has been completed successfully, then it will take them back to the market page like it's supposed to. So we actually have a built-in function for that as well so let's go ahead to pycharm and see how we can use it okay so we will go to our pycharm and we will go inside our routes.py and we will import this function that will be responsible to not take our users to that market page if the user is not logged in so it will be as easy as going to that from flask underscore login line and say login underscore required okay so once we import this then we can use it as a decorator now if you remember from the very beginning of this entire tutorial i said that the decorators are like functions that execute before the actual function itself so there is a reason why we put in app.route because we want to execute this functionality before we create the route itself so the same approach goes to login required. We could actually use this function as a decorator right before our market underscore page route executes. So it will be app.route slash market. And then right after it, we could basically say login underscore required. So it will be something like, okay, we are going to that market page. So this line executes and then this line executes so this line will be responsible to take our users automatically to the login page now let's actually see if only adding this line is enough to complete our functionality so i will save that file 
and I will go to our website and I will click on home and then I will click again on our get started and you can see that we receive an unauthorized message here that says us the server could not verify that you are authorized to access the URL that is requested. Now this is fine but we would like to display the login page automatically if we require our users to log in before accessing this page. So we actually have to say to our application where is that login page located so I can redirect the user that wants to log in. So it totally makes sense because if you take a look in that login required decorator, we actually do not provide any extra information about where it should send our users. So to configure this up, we should go to our underscore init.py file and we should specify to our login underscore manager where is the login route actually located. So once we go down here, and we say login underscore manager dot login underscore view equals to and this actually expects for the name as a string of our login route so if we take a look if you remember this is how we named our login route so I will copy the name of the function and I will paste this in between those double quotes. So now that we have added this, this should be enough to redirect our users to the login page before the market page. So let's test this out, okay? I will go back to home and I will go to get started. And now you can see that it already leads us to the login page. Now you could pay attention that it shows us the alert not in the nicest way, but we will solve that in a minute. But I actually want you to take a closer look to what's going on in the URL bar in here. Now you can see that we see the slash login, but we see a syntax of query with a question mark that says us that the next URL from here will be market. So you can understand this from this HTML expression in here. So this means that everything is actually working properly. Now let's fix this alert in here. So we probably want to specify to that login manager how we want to display a flashed message. Because when we use the built-in login required, it automatically takes responsibility to flash a message. So we want to give it a category so it can understand to display this in a blue color or something like that. So I will go back to our Dunder init file and right under this line, I will say login manager dot login message category. And you can already see that it is a built-in field that I can fill in so this will be equal to info because we probably want to display this in a blue color so once we save this then we can test this out again so we can go back to home and again click on get started and now you can see that it really works like we expect okay so we see our regular flashed messages like we used to see when we try to log in log out or register Okay, so now I can basically try to log in with a random user that already exists. So we will try to log in with that JSC4 user and I will click on sign in. And now everything is back and works properly. So this is a really great addition to our website because this way our clients could not access this slash market page unless if they are logged in already. Now I'd also like to show you the behavior when we try to register to that website very quick. So let's try to create an account with JSC6 and we will specify a valid mail like that and we will type a basic password. And now if we click on create account, then you can see that it created this account and it already shows us that please log in to access this page. Now you can see that it tries to lead the created account to the market page as well, but it requires the currently registered user to log in. Now, it could have been a lot nicer if we raised a message 
that the user is created successfully and then already log in that user. So this is something we probably wanted to do a lot earlier than right now, but let's actually do that. Okay, so we will go to PyCharm and I'm already in my route.py. Now I want you to take a look right in here. So actually in the part that we try to redirect our users to the market page, it could have been a lot nicer if we do those two things here. So first we'd like to flash a new message and also we'd like to log in our users so it can already see the market page as a new user. So I will grab those two lines from our login route. So I will copy those and I will go back and paste this in right here. Now in the argument, let's actually delete the entire message from here. Great. Now as the argument of the login user, we could basically pass in the user object that is user to create. So we can say user underscore to underscore create. Now, if nothing goes wrong with those two lines, then it means that the user has been created successfully so we can log in that user. Now, once we do this, then we can type in a message like the following. So it will be, let's write in a formatted string here and we can say account created successfully and we can say you are now logged in as and we can say user to create dot username like that. Okay, so let's test this out with another user that we probably want to create now. Now I forgot to specify the category, so excuse me for that. And it is a great idea to actually go ahead and say category equals to success exactly like that. Okay, so now we can go here and we can try to register again. So we will create the GSC 7 that time and we will try to create the, we will try to fill in valid information so we can click on create account. And now you can see that we are already in the slash market and it says us that we are logged in as GSC 7. So it is a lot better now because the new clients that are going to register to that website are going to have a lot better experience with this approach. All right, everyone. So I think this will close out the episode. Now in the next episode, we are actually going to complete the functionality behind the more info and then purchase this item. So we are really close to finish that project. And I hope that everything was pretty much clear until this point. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you on my next episode.